In this video, I am going to do some monogramming with my new brother LX3014 sewing machine. Someone has asked me if I could do a video on the monogramming, and I'm not very good at monogramming. Um, I have done one test, and I think I can do this. So let me show you what we're going to need. Uh, first of all, the machine right now is just set at normal sewing. Um, we will need the feed cover plate that came with the machine. We will need the screwdriver that came with the machine. These are test stitches, so you might want to do a few test zigzag stitches to make sure your bobbin and your thread tension are correct and that um, the stitches look good to you. And you will need a small embroidery hoop. Now this is the sample I did. You can see at the top here are samples of some of the other stitches this machine does. This right here was my first attempt at the monogramming and it just doesn't look too good. This was my second attempt at an L and I purposely didn't go all the way over uh, to the bottom here. Now that is on the machine um, Size 5 is listed as their satin stitch, or setting 5, stitch setting 5 on the dial. And this is a 5. And I'll show you that up here on the machine. It's right here. And it's a little bit thicker, but it was that the book described it as a satin stitch. Now, they do say for embroidery, monogramming, and applique, you can use settings 2, 3, 4, or 5. And those are the four different zigzag stitches. So because I had read that the uh, stitch 5 was the zigzag, I mean the um, satin stitch, that's what I did. And this is on fleece fabric. This is a polar fleece fabric. I happen to have a lot of it, um, so I just grabbed a piece of scrap fabric. Now, um, I had drawn uh, the L on there with pencil, because they do say to draw your design. So what we're going to do, first I have to show you what you need to do with the machine. You want to make sure you have your thread and your bobbin ready. And you have to remove the presser foot and the presser foot adapter and you want to use their little screwdriver that is not what I want to happen I don't want to lose the screw so we'll set those aside so you need to remove as I said your presser foot and the presser foot adapter and when you do go to sew, you will be lowering the presser bar even though there's nothing on there. And the next thing you need to do is put the um, feed cover plate on there. And it goes like this. So make a note of where the slots are on the side and where the opening for the needle is. And there are two holes in the needle plate, and it just pops on. And you want to be careful you don't um, get your finger stuck by the needle. You see it's plastic, so I'm being careful not to break it, is what I'm doing. And I just want to get that... If you line up one, get one to go in there, the little plastic piece that fits in there is like half a, half a circle. Let me pause and um, get my glasses. This is a better angle anyway. There's one hole there. There's one hole there. There are the, the two tabs, one there and one on the other side for the plate. And 
and it just goes down. This went on in one second the first time I did this. I think because it's a new machine I'm afraid of breaking anything. So there it is. Now your feed cover plate, feed dog cover plate is on there and it says for the first um, thing to do you would then um, lower the presser bar but like that when you're ready to sew. But first we have to put the fabric in the embroidery tool. Now what you have to make sure of, I'm using a spring type hoop. And what you have to make sure of is that your letters, in this case I've, those are both L's, one straight and one is more of a script, um, that they face opposite of how you would normally, if you were going to do hand embroidery or hand sewing, you would um, have the L's facing up this way. You want to have them facing that way. And I'm also going to put a piece, an extra piece of muslin. That fabric is muslin. On the back, just a, a random piece to be a stabilizer. And you can see I didn't get a, pr a chance to press it. so that I'm going to tighten that, but when you go to put the hoop under the needle, you need uh, the open side of the hoop facing up. Okay, so I have the fabric in the hoop with my two L's drawn on there, and um, not completely neat, but it, I think it's tight enough and it will work. Now, one thing, make sure you have pulled a long tail for the, t the upper thread before you start. You have the presser bar up right now, and I found it's easiest to bring the hoop from behind and just fit it under the presser bar like that. You have the needle in the highest position, and you do the same thing. You just slide the hoop underneath the needle. Now what I did find, so there is, this is in position for that first L, the more square one on the left. And be, um, so you put the, the hoop, your fabric in the hoop, you've got your monogram marked with, uh, that's actually ink this time so I could see it better. And um, so now I'm going to lower the presser bar. And I'm going to have the machine pick up the first stitch. And obviously I have to hold this down. I'm going to put the camera down in a second when I do this. But I want it to pick up the bobbin thread, which is what you need to do. You need to have it uh, pick up the bobbin thread and um, so that both threads are coming from the top. But before I do that, I want to mention again that this was stitch selection 5, which is their satin stitch, and this is uh, stitch 2. Now, if you just choose uh, 2 for the stitch setting, this is a nice zigzag stitch. It's actually the width I want for the monogram, but you can see it's not um, a satin stitch, it's a zigzag stitch. Now what I'm about to find out is whether or not um, when I choose that and I'm doing embroidery, if I can just hold the fabric in place and make it a satin stitch. In other words, since the feed dogs are covered, I can make it that width. So I'm going to try um, stitch selection 2 for this monogram. So up here, that's two, and that's here. Now one other thing I want to mention that you would need the screwdriver for, you see a minus on the left and a plus on the right. And I believe this um, 
if you use their screwdriver to adjust this, it adjusts how close together the satin stitch stitching is. So if you want a really puffy on top of each other stitch, I would imagine you would go toward the plus sign, and if you wanted a little more open stitch, you would go toward the negative. So that's the other thing to mention. And now I'll set the camera up and pick up that first thread, and we'll see how I do with a monogram. Okay, I have it set up, and I have the camera to the right side of what I'm doing. And I think you will be able to see, I've actually done two small stitches um, with the top of the L, and when you hold and move the fabric, you want to go slow and you want to watch what the needle is doing and how fast it's putting the stitches down and you want to work with the machine instead of expecting the machine to just do it. That's what I found the first time. So let me make sure I have everything set right here. I have my tension set on about three, a little under three. I have two pieces of muslin. Stitch setting is on two. Let's go ahead and try this. better than it did the first time. Now, out of habit, I'm going to pick up the pressure bar before I move the hoop, and I'm actually going to lift the needle, and this time I'm going to back up a little bit if I can. I'm right up against the hoop with the pressure bar. And that's now down, so I'm going to put, I'm, I'm still going to end up with that little open area um, at the bottom of my L because of where I have the fabric in the hoop. So let's do it again. <laughs> much better with this as you go along. Um, it's not very even, and I'm sitting in a low chair, which means I'm not really looking down at it, and I think that's the better position to be in. Um, but that's not bad, considering I don't do monograms <laughs> generally. This is going to be interesting because this is more of a script. And we'll see if I can do that. Let's try that now. And I think I'll grab the scissors and I'll trim these threads before I move on to the next one. Now, my um, older Singer Model 237 has almost the same procedure as what I just did. And I had great difficulty doing it on that machine. But at that time, I had not realized that I had to hold the um, embroidery hoop upside down with, the, with it really, with the open side of the hoop toward the top. So here we go with that one. And we'll try the next one. I might end up monogramming my clothes or my tote bags or, you know, remember Laverne and Shirley? <laughs> Laverne had an L on everything. I could put an L on everything. So now I'm going to bring it in a bit again from the back. I'm going to make sure I have a long tail off the back. 
I'm going to leave it on two because that's the smallest uh, zigzag stitch they have. I'm going to bring the needle down. And I, I think you could tell um, my L wasn't completely even because I moved too fast or too slow. And that's why I think it takes practice. So let's do this again. And I, I have to remember to push the fabric down. You want the fabric down tightly against um, the, the darning plate, the feed cover plate, as tightly as possible. <laughs> a lot more difficult. And see, I I think if it picks up a loose bobbin thread underneath, then you run into it a little bit of an issue with the bobbin. Yeah, I've got all kinds of bobbin loops under there. And I don't know why that was, except the one thing I did not do, which what they do tell you to do, is um, start with two stitches or one stitch first. In other words, I just jumped in and started. And you can see I'm a little bit all over the place there. But again, I think with practice, um, if I were doing this all the time, I think this would, this would become much easier. Now I have to move away from that area because I have a lot of um, thread caught underneath it and I don't want to keep um, working into that. So I'll just do a partial. And this time by turning the hand wheel toward me, the two stitches, I'm going to let the machine pick up the bobbin thread. And that's still making a it's still catching. And that time the fabric got pulled down. But I think all of all of those problems right there are only because um like, I don't see the bobbin thread. Let me use something else to pull that bobbin thread up. Yeah, see, there's no bobbin thread there. Um, but I think you get the idea. I can um, take the bobbin case out, check the bobbin, and um, see if it's the bobbin. But with the first gel, I think you see that Obviously, it can be done, and with this one, um, if I had been able to go a little bit more slowly, if I had picked up the two stitches there, like they told me to, and then gone a little bit more slowly, and with practice, I'd be able to make that a more smooth curve, and then I don't think this part would be a problem, and then again, practice with the curve, but just out of curiosity, I want to check the bobbin case. I'm going to shut the machine off for a second. No, and the bobbin's fine. So it was just when you're uh, using a darning or embroidery uh, plate, a, a feed cover plate, you want to make sure that when you take the bobbin case out or put it back in, that the upper, the arm that points vertically goes back into the groove of where it's supposed to be and that the bobbin case is in there correctly. And now that uh, what had happened was the bobbin thread was too short and that's why it didn't pick it up. So we'll, we will try it again and see.
And again, I'm just going to do two stitches. Now that could be, um, it's still loose, but there is a double loop being made for some reason. Now I haven't changed anything on the machine. Um, ah, why don't we do that? Why don't I actually pull the bobbin thread up through the top? And I'm sure that will make a difference. I was getting um, like a double thread loop on the bottom. Now I'm still on the two setting, but I'm all over the place here. Like I told you, I don't do free motion quilting, I don't do monogramming, so this is a real learning experience. So I jumped around a little bit, and the key is to get the bobbin spread up to the surface before you start, I think. Just making sure not to grow. You see, you move the fabric at all, and it, it really moves. Well, that little part I did well. Now, on the end there, thing I don't do that for a living. Now see, I have to be careful of the needle. Make sure it's all the way up. Tilt the hoop vertically. Now through here, I got more of a zigzag stitch because I went too fast. Through here, I jumped over to the side. And really, the best area was right down here, where I moved it at the right speed and got a satin stitch look and filled in my area. But, you know, obviously, other than the jumping around up here, I think that if I did this two or three times, I'd be, I'd be doing monograms well. So, um, in my opinion, this is easy. Because, you know, taking into consideration, I don't really do this, and um, I've never used this machine in that way, and it was easy to try. So it really is a matter of bringing the bobbin thread up first, so it's on the surface, and then practicing for your speed and how easily the hoop slides around, because... A couple of these mistakes weren't really mine. It was that I happened to just move the hoop a millimeter and ended up way over there. So um, that is monogramming with the Brother LX3014.